I'm here at the International Continent Society and IUGA meeting with Dr. Christine Whitmore. And I wanted to ask Dr. Whitmore, who's one of our advisory board members, our medical advisory board members, what's changed in the last 10 years? Are things better for IC patients? Well, first of all, there seems to be a better awareness. I mean, 10 years ago, at mo there was less than a million uh, Americans thought to have IC. Most recently, on the brand interstitial cystitis epidemiologic survey, it's up to 7.9 million women. So that must mean that there's an increased awareness because patients are telling and doctors are asking. So that's come a long way. The recognition that there are other comorbidities such as fibromyalgia, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, irritable bowel, endometriosis, vulvodynia, concomitant with IC, means that people will be, gay, be able to get all of their pain generators treated. So that's huge. The MAP study, which is a $37.5 million initiative by the NIH for research, is not just about bladder, it's about the bladder and all of its comorbidities, both clinically and also on a basic science level. We have potential clinical phenotyping, so we can uh, find all the comorbidities and treat each comorbidity separately. So the acceptance of multimodal therapy is very good. The uh, first attempt at clinical phenotyping is U-point, which is a urinary, psychological, organ-specific, infection, uh, neurologic system, systemic, and uh, the tight muscles. So if we treat each one of those issues separately, then the chance that we're going to have better overall treatment is good. No, there's not a lot of new specific drugs, but now we have an American Neurological Association guidelines which just come out, which actually has different uh, first line, second line, third line, fourth line, and fifth line treatments. It's considered uh, all the options, which means that from the physician academic point of view, people have reviewed all of the literature and actually have pulled together to make recommendations so that the general urologist, gynecologist, the primary care provider, and other healthcare professionals will have access to a set of guidelines on just what to do with this treatment. We are working better with all of the international pain community, which has never happened before because we realize that this is a, uh, not just an end organ disease, it involves the pelvis and the uh, central nervous system. There's functional body syndrome, some other things going on. So we've come a long way, baby. We just don't have all the answers yet.